Hello, and welcome to Building Community Spiritual Power, a workshop created by UU Wellspring to give you the experience of spiritual practice, whether you are watching individually or with a group. My name is Linnea Nelson, and I am the Executive Director of UU Wellspring, a spiritual deepening program for Unitarian Universalist souls. We see the UU Wellspring program as a wheel with five spokes, one of which is daily spiritual practice. The other spokes are small group presence, deep listening, exploring our history and theological roots, and putting our faith into action. All of this is part of the year-long first-year program that focuses on our UU sources. Today, two of our beloved board members will each lead you in a spiritual practice. These spiritual practices are both ones that when done in community can bring a depth of faith to a group, congregation, or even our denomination. For example, Skinner House Books publishes annual in-spirit meditation manuals as a way to engage our entire denomination in the spiritual practice of deep reading, which brings a certain spiritual understanding and power to the community. In UU Wellspring, we share our spiritual practices with one another in small groups to invite the group to engage in a deeply meaningful activity together. Engaging in spiritual practices together also allows us to connect and share our faith, building community and the spiritual power. Again, welcome to UU Wellspring's workshop on building community spiritual power. First, David Banks will lead you in a Lexia Divina, a repeated reading that can lead you to a deeper connection to your soul and the divine. David attends the River Road Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Bethesda, Maryland. He has participated in and facilitated UU Wellspring sources and serves UU Wellspring as a board member. David enjoys discussing spiritual concepts as well as learning how to apply these ideas in everyday life. He's passionate about engaging communities of color, having worked as a social worker and nurse among African-American and Latin American Latinx communities nationwide. He's a professor teaching health and behavioral sciences courses online at the University of Maryland and Catholic University. Moreover, he's excited to lead online UU Wellspring groups. As David engages you in Lexio Divina, please pause the video as suggested to fully participate in the practice. Just listening to what a spiritual practice is will only begin to offer the deeper experience. Reverend Viola Abbott will then lead you in a second practice, this time from our Sacred Arts Advanced Program. Reverend Abbott is currently serving as the Minister of the Coastal Virginia Unitarian Universalist in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and she also serves as a board member of UU Wellspring. You may know Reverend Viola as a contributor to the Promise and the Practice Liturgical Materials or from the several UU congregations in the Capital District area of New York that she attended or served. She has participated in various UU Wellspring programs since 2004, and she says that she values the richness that UU Wellspring has brought to her life, whether it has been as a participant or a facilitator, and she's seen how it has worked in the lives of others. We will also be welcoming the chair of UU Wellspring, Carolyn Bierke. Carolyn Bierke serves as the Director of Music at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Ventura, California. Carolyn is passionate about growing and supporting spiritual community, especially through music. A singer and teacher, she has taught and coached singers of nearly every age and ability. The connection to joy and spirit that music brings is universal, which makes her work rich and rewarding. Carolyn is a UU certified music leader, and she will be helping to answer some of the questions that you might have about UU Wellspring at the end of the two spiritual practices. So welcome to David, to Viola, and to Carolyn. 
Hello, I'm David Banks, and I want to introduce you to the Lectio Divina. It's a spiritual practice that is a part of UU Wellspring. Lectio Divina dates back to 12th century Christianity, and it's a way to listen to a text while letting go of our own agenda. I want to step you through the process. Let's begin with a short poem that I will read three times. The first time, I'd like you simply just to take it all in. Reformation, the spirit of the wind. Some say the spirit of the wind is in the trees. You can see it, they say, if you close your eyes and stand real still. Some say the same spirit lives in the hills, forging mountains and plains. I smelled it the other night. Lying in my bed, my window cracked. It crept through the moonlight, up under my blanket, and wrapped its arms around me. Entering my blood through my skin, I felt alive with an age I had not yet reached. Made new again in a form I'd never known. I cried out in pain and joy, mingled fear and expectation. Ecstasy, it has been called. I call it reformation. There was forgiveness in that spirit, compassion for my wounds, strength for my weaknesses. It was no miracle, no nirvana. I just closed my eyes and saw the spirit. The spirit in the wind, the spirit in the trees, the spirit that lives in me. Kristen Harper, Voices from the Margins, an anthology of meditations, Skinner House Books. I will now read the poem, the same poem, a second time. And during this reading, I'd like you to listen for your own word or phrase that stands out for you. Reformation, the spirit of the wind. Some say the spirit of the wind is in the trees. You can see it, they say, if you close your eyes and stand real still. Some say that the same spirit lives in the hills, forging mountains and plains. I smelled it the other night. Lying in my bed, my window cracked. It crept through the moonlight, up under my blanket, and wrapped its arms around me. Entering my blood through my skin, I felt alive with an age I had not yet reached. Made new again in a form I'd never known. I cried out in pain and joy mingled. Fear and expectation, ecstasy it has been called. I call it reformation. It was forgiveness in that spirit, compassion for my wounds, strength, for my weaknesses. It was no miracle nor nirvana. I just closed my eyes and saw the spirit, the spirit in the wind, the spirit in the trees, the spirit that lives in me. Kristen Harper, Voices from the Margins, an anthology of meditations by Skinner House Books. Please pause the video, write the word or phrase that resonated with you, and take a moment to consider it. I'd like to read the poem a third time. And as you are moved, sit for a few moments and reflect after this third reading on that word, that phrase that you picked out and what it has to teach you. Reformation, the spirit of the wind. Some say the spirit of the wind is in the trees. You can see it, they say, if you close your eyes and stand real still. Some say that the same spirit lives in the hills, forging mountains and plains. I smelled it the other night, lying in my bed, my window cracked. It crept through the moonlight, up under my blanket and wrapped its arms around me, entering my blood through my skin. I felt alive with an age I had not yet reached. Made again 
in a form I'd never known. I cried out in pain and joy mingled, fear and expectation. Ecstasy, it has been called. I call it reformation. There was forgiveness in that spirit, compassion for my wounds, strength for my weaknesses. It was no miracle nor nirvana. I just closed my eyes and saw the spirit. The spirit in the wind, the spirit in the trees, the spirit that lives in me. Kristen Harper, Voices from the Margin, an anthology of meditations by Skinner House Books. Please pause the video and write the word or phrase that resonated with you. Take a moment to either note its significance or sketch it to embed its meaning for you in this moment. And now simply rest and listen to that still small voice within. Please pause the video one more time. Close your eyes if you are comfortable and imagine the word you chose. Sit with it and see what images or thoughts come to mind. You may want to journal as well. And thank you for being here. Hello, I am Reverend Viola Abbott and I'm going to guide you through a spiritual practice that is similar to Lexio Divina. It's one that requires us to not only listen, but observe before we reflect. We use this process in our Sacred Arts Advanced UU Wellspring program. First, we will observe a piece of art, in this case, a musical piece, before we learn anything about it. This gives us the opportunity to make observations and connections we might not make if the piece were explained to us in advance because any such explanation would take us away from being heart-centered and would throw us directly into left brain categorization and analysis which is not where we want to be by approaching the pieces intuitively we enter into a transitional in-between space of potential. Experiencing art in and of itself is an act of creativity, or in the words of religious scholar Diana Eck, experiencing art is also an act of making. Today we will watch and listen to a musical presentation and thank you to Leah Morris, the composer and musician who gave us the permission to use her song, Be the Light. But before that happens, we need to establish the way we want to approach this practice. It's about sharing. It's not about consensus. It's about the creative spark. It's about expanding and including. It's about companionship. First, we will begin with a time of observation, in silence. When the piece is finished, I would like you to journal about your initial impressions. If you're in a group, if you're comfortable, share only what you saw or heard. Don't analyze, don't offer information if you know something about the piece. Simply offer impressions based on what you observe. After everyone has had an opportunity to share their initial impressions, we will share context. In this case, how the artist created the work. When you do this practice on your own, after journaling or sharing your initial impressions, you could research the artist, the style, or any cultural or religious connections and then revisit your journal entry or add to your conversations with others about the piece. Finally, you will have a few minutes to reflect on the impact, meaning, and connections you are all making with this piece. If you're watching as a group, 
pause the video to share your impressions. If you're watching alone, continue to journal or draw or ponder what Leah Morris told you and how it impacts your impression of the song. Now let us experience the music of Leah Morris's Be The Light. There is always a light When we are ready to see it There is always a light When we are ready to be it To see the light, to be the light To raise our eyes in the dark of night To climb this hill Together we will there is always a light in the dark. We are ready to see this. There is always a light in the dark. We are ready to be it. To see the light, to be light, to raise our eyes the dark of night and be a gift. Together we will. There is always a light. There is always a light. We are ready to see it. There is always a light. There is always in the dark. We are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night and be a kindness in this hill. We will. There is always a light. There is always a Pause the video to reflect on your initial impressions, what you saw and heard. Journal or draw your thoughts and share, and when you are done, return to this video. Now Leah, in another video, will provide a little bit about the context. If you were in a Sacred Arts UU Wellspring group, the facilitator would provide that information for you. Hey you guys, Leah here. So I must be among millions, if not billions of people who tuned in to the inauguration on January 20th, 2021. And I was inspired by every moment of it, but especially wrapped and lifted, exalted, just completely fixated and moved by Amanda Gorman's poem, her presence, her beauty, her artistry. And so this song was born. Last, so there were two lines that stood out, which is saying a lot considering that, you know, every section that she shared, every image that she presented was so rich. But the, the, the parts that really just grabbed me and stayed with me, she echoed a, a and, and Amanda Gorman echoed a concept that I've been thinking of for years and years and years and years and years. And that is our United States. And in fact, every one of us and anything that we encountered is not broken. It's unfinished. And as soon as I received her words of that, I, I recognized that we were kindred, looking at the same nation with more than hope, with just so much love, right? So much love and expectation and awareness that we get to help continue write this story. And the final lines of her poem, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but she says that there is always a light. There is always a light, no matter what you're seeing, it's always there, but you have to be brave enough to see it. You have to be brave enough to be it, to be that which you're looking for in the world. And she's, of course, paraphrasing Gandhi and, you know, that he got it somewhere. <laughs> it's a human concept that we're just continuing to share forward with and for one another so that we remember uh, the task that we are joyfully called to be the light.
So I'll play it on the guitar, but it's mostly intended as an uh, acoustic uh, a cappella piece. So I'm. There is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night, to climb this hill, together we will. There is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it, to see the light, to be the light, to raise in the dark of night to climb this hill together we will be the light now please stop the video to journal and reflect on this additional information now we are going to see and hear the song one more time so that we can experience it fully with our hearts and with our heads. There is always a light when we are ready to see it. There is always a light when we are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night, to climb this hill, together we will. There is always your light in the dark. We are ready to see this. There is always your light in the dark. We are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night and be a gift. Together we will. There is always there is always your light. There is always the dark. We are ready to see it. There is always there is always. There is always in the dark. Light. We are ready to be it. To see the light, to be the light, to raise our eyes in the dark of night and be a glimmer to get what we will. There is always light. There is always dark. There is always light. There is always dark. To see the light, to be the light. In this brief time, you may not have had a chance to fully process all of your thoughts. This experience may stick with you for a while. You are encouraged to journal about it or discuss it after this session. Thank you so much for taking the time to engage in this practice today. Thank you, David and Reverend Viola, for leading us in these spiritual practices. They will help us develop both a personal spiritual life as well as build the spiritual power in our communities. Now, as I promised, we are going to be interviewing the chair of the UU Wellspring Board, Carolyn Bjerke. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you, Linnea. I am so happy to be here. Wellspring means a lot to me. It is... Um, been a transforming part of my life. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. Oh, that's wonderful. I have the exact same feeling. So um, it's good to be here. What has you. been the experience for you as a participant in UU Wellspring, Carolyn? It's been really transforming. And when I started out in sources, it really affirmed the importance of having a spiritual community to me. And as we grew as a group, um, I learned from the others, I, I exchanged ideas and beliefs, and then I gained insight about my own through, uh, through everyone, else's, everyone else's ideas. Maybe, uh, what was surprising for you in UU Wellspring? 
Well, I was surprised at how I thought I had a spiritual practice and I valued spiritual practice, but how easy it was to let them go. And so by being in the, the group, we made each other accountable. And it wasn't like there was judgment if we didn't um, do our spiritual practice because we all get busy and they all fall away. But it's that coming back every two weeks and being accountable um, that really helped me to grow over that 10 months. And it was really special to have 10 months with the same people in the same community um, talking about our experiences of faith and spiritual practice. And then when we got to the end of that 10 months, I could really see how I had grown and changed and it gave me insight into my own spiritual spirituality and also what, what I really value because I could see that the things that I valued carried through over that time. Thank you. Well, what do you think um, other people might want to know about you, you wellspring, Carolyn? I think that it's, it's, it's good to know that it's for everybody. It, the questions are such that anybody can challenge their own faith and, and it's, it supports that. It supports our own individual path. So I've told you a little bit about why I'm so passionate about Wellspring and what I've gained. Um, can you tell us a little bit, Linnea, about some of the practical sides um, what is the easiest way for congregations to get started in UU Wellspring? Sure. The easiest way is to send me an email at director at uuwellspring.org and we'll set up a time to talk. Or you could come to one of our uh, second Tuesday uh, information sessions. And once again, you can just email me and I'll send you a link to that. We like to develop a real relationship with you. So go ahead and send me a couple of questions or just tell me you're interested and I'll take it from there. We also have a new launch video for 2022-23 and it's on the front page of our website. So there's just a, a, a short video that you can watch and it will tell you about all of our programs. Excellent. And what about individuals? If somebody is an individual and wants to join UU Wellspring, but their congregation doesn't offer it, how do they participate? How much does it cost? And what other resources do they need? Sure. So individuals who would like to participate can join one of our many online programs. We start programs in the fall and we start a few more programs again in January. There are different cohorts. There are cohorts just for clergy. There are cohorts for lay folks. There are cohorts for religious professionals. So you wanna check out all of our options. We also have some online programs for our new program, which is UU Wellspring Reads. And it's only six sessions instead of a whole year. So if you wanna dip your toe in, you could take it this summer which is starting in, in July, or you could take it in the fall. So there, there is a form. And if you go to our website, www.uuwellspring.org, you will find that right at the very top of the page in an orange box is a place to learn all about our online programs and to go ahead and register. And since you brought up cost, I will share that UU Wellspring um, when we were very small and just starting out, um, the cost was more because that was the way that we were able to move forward. Um, but because of some very generous funding from UU funding um, from the UUA, as well as more participants, we're able to offer it at a more um, cost-effective price, especially for smaller congregations. We now charge based on the number of members in your congregation. So if you have 200 members, your annual fee will be $200. And our retreat fees range from $250 to $400. And that retreat is a one-time first-year fee. And so I'm hoping that we can make this very affordable for everyone who wants to do it. And the online costs 
our uh, sliding scale um, from $400 to $600 per person for the yeah. year long. And but we also can give a $100 scholarship if needed. So um, hopefully that also will be a way to um, get into UU Wellspring and those spiritual practices by having this community. And we also encourage a spiritual director, either a paid spiritual director outside of the program, or you can have a spiritual friend. And we guide all of that in the retreat that we all do together as participants. Thank you, Linnea. Thank you for those details. And I hope that, uh, my hope is that if, if someone is interested that they'll come and give it a try, get some information because it is a wonderful experience. Thank you. I too. It's been life changing. And it's just such an honor to uh, work for UU Wellspring because I feel like I'm working on the behalf of all Unitarian Universalists. So thanks for being here. And thank you all for uh, participating in this workshop. Feel free to watch it again or bring it back to your community and share it with um, other groups that uh, in your community that might want to have an opportunity to develop a spiritual practice as a way to build community spiritual power by having more and more people in your community doing spiritual practice, either individually or together. It will bring your community spiritual power by having everyone grounded and ready to face the day. Blessings all.